Hello again, my name's John. I'm a retired chef from the northeast of England in the UK and welcome to my latest bread video. And in this one I'll be making this very healthy 50% whole wheat and seeded farmhouse loaf. Now I'll be making mine in my Dutch oven, but don't worry if you don't have one, I'll show you an alternative way to do it. But I would recommend you invest in a good quality cast iron Dutch oven. I'll leave a link in the description box for the one I'm using. And I'm not being sponsored by the way. You can view the ingredients list and full written method for this recipe on the recipe page on the channel's website. I'll leave a link in the description under the video or you can click on the eye icon top right of the screen to take you directly to the recipe page. And in the very next video to go with this gorgeous bread, I'll show you how to make this mouth-watering, creamy onion potato and ham soup. And I'd like to thank the Patreon and PayPal supporters for their very kind help. I'll be doing the shout out and name splash a little later in the video. Okay, let's get on with today's recipe. Right, I'll start the recipe by testing that the yeast is alive and well. To the lukewarm water, first add the sugar and whisk until it dissolves. Most of the equipment I use in my videos are available from the website shop, including these fantastic little mini whisks. Now add the dry yeast and whisk it in until it's all dissolved. If you're using fresh yeast, you'll need 25 grams for this recipe. Right, now set that aside for 10 minutes until it foams up. OK, to a nice warm bowl add the rest of the dry ingredients, starting with the white bread flour. Next, add the whole wheat flour. The next dry ingredient to add is the mixed seeds. Now you can use whatever seeds you like. I'm using a mixture of sesame, pumpkin, sunflower, flax, poppy and with a few pine nuts for a bit extra crunch. Now add the salt and thoroughly mix all of these dry ingredients together using a whisk. Time to add the wet ingredients and as you can see the yeast mixture is forming up nicely. This means the yeast is alive and kicking and ready to go. Finally add the oil and if you don't use oil you can use softened butter or lard instead. OK, using my trusty wooden spoon handle, also available in the shop, I bring it all together to a sticky mass. You can of course use a stand mixer to do this part, but only until it comes together. Remember, this is a no need recipe. But in real time, this only takes about 90 seconds to do by hand. Don't forget to scrape down the sides of the bowl. Once your door looks like mine, get the bowl covered. To save on single-use plastic wrap, I use my extra strong reusable shower caps to cover my bowls. These are available in the shop too, now in different colours, white, black and white and very soon deep pink ones will be available too. OK, get the dough into a nice warm spot for 30 minutes. I'm proofing mine in the oven with just the light bulb on. It's an ideal spot for proofing dough. And like I said, set your timer for 30 minutes. Okay. 
OK, that first 30 minutes proofing is up. And for this next step, have a bowl of warm water ready. As you can see, the dough has doubled in size. Now turn it out onto a wet surface as shown. Right, with wet hands, knock it back by giving it a few turns for 30 seconds or so. Try to copy this French slap and fold technique. It's a very effective way to knock back the dough. If you can't do it, just fold it as best you can, but make sure your hands are wet. Strangely enough, that prevents this pretty wet dough from sticking to your hands. You should see the dough starting to become very smooth at this point. Now get it back into the bowl and back into its warm spot for another 30 minutes. And there it goes, back into the warm oven for another 30 minutes. OK, like I said at the beginning, I'm going to be using a Dutch oven to make this loaf. And to safely transfer the dough to the very hot Dutch oven, I'll be using this 8 inch or 20 centimeter wok. But first, I have to prepare it. First off, I'll give it a coat of butter. And to make it super non-stick, I'll add a teaspoon of vegetable oil on top of the butter. Now this not only allows the dough to release easily from the wok, but it also helps apply the seed topping to the loaf. And for that topping, I'm using 45 grams, that's one and a half ounces, of the exact same seeds that went into the loaf. If you're not following me at the moment, all will become clear in a while. Right, that's the transfer vessel ready to go. OK, that's the second proofing done. And as you can see, it's risen a lot more this time. Right, just like the first time, turn it out onto a wet surface. Using the same method, with wet hands, knock the dough back again. So far, so good. Right, now shape it into a rough ball as shown. To help the seeds stick, add a little extra water to the top of the dough ball. Now this surface will become the top of the loaf. Right, get your wok close by and confidently pick up the dough ball and slap it into the wok wet side down on top of the seeds. Now even out the dough like I'm doing. Now this will become the bottom of the finished loaf. Sprinkle on a little flour using your flour sieve if you have one and cover it with a lightweight proofing cloth and set your timer for 30 minutes. Right, as soon as you set your timer, preheat your oven now to 230 Celsius, that's 445 Fahrenheit, or gas mark 8. And now is the time to get your Dutch oven into the oven, as it needs at least 25 minutes to get up to proper temperature. Now, if you're not using a Dutch oven, I'll show you a different way in a moment, and you just need to preheat your main oven when there's only 10 minutes left on the proofing timer. Right, that's the last proof done, so it's now time to get this loaf baked. 
very carefully remove this extremely hot Dutch oven from the main oven and place it on the hob. Remove the lid, there will be some smoke so make sure your extractors are on. Right, take the cover off the door and as you can see it's well risen. Now quickly but safely tip it into the hot Dutch oven. Give the Dutchie a quick swirl to centralise the door. Get the lid on and get it back into the oven and set your timer for 30 minutes. Right, if you're not using a Dutch oven, you'll need to follow the baking instructions on my Easy Farmhouse Loaf video, but using this farmhouse seeded recipe. I'll leave a link in the description box or click on the eye icon top right of your screen and that'll take you to that video. But, like I said at the start, this bread is much better out of a cast iron Dutch oven, so I do hope you invest in one. And while that's baking, I hope you don't mind if I give my very first recipe book a bit of a plug. And for the next few days, I'll be throwing in a free baker's scraper. The offer closes midnight Thursday the 24th of September UK time. So get your order in now if you want a free baker's scraper worth £3. And that's anywhere in the world. There's no need to order the scraper separately. It will be added automatically when you order a book. The book has lots of our favourite recipes from our work kitchens in it and is available in the channel's website shop along with loads of other equipment I use in the videos. It's just another way you can support the channel. I leave a link in the description box below the video or just click on the i icon top right of your screen if you want to order a copy today. Okay that's the initial 30 minutes baking time up. Now to make the top a bit more crispier carefully remove the lid and give the loaf a further 5 to 6 minutes. I'm setting mine for an extra 6 minutes. Right, remove the dutchie from the oven and tip out the bread as shown, remembering that the dutch oven is extremely hot, so don't place it down on a wooden bench. And it looks absolutely stunning. What a fantastic loaf of bread this is. Now get it onto a wire rack and let it cool for 20 to 30 minutes. Ok, mine's cooled off, so I'll cut a couple of slices off and I'll give it a try with some of my homemade butter. It has a wonderful soft crumb and the smell is fantastic. And this rustic half whole wheat bread tastes absolutely delicious. Give it a try and I'm sure you'll give it a big thumbs up too. And like I said at the intro, my next recipe is this amazing mouth watering cream of onion potato and ham soup to go with this awesome loaf of bread. And as promised at the beginning, here is the latest list of my Patreon and PayPal supporters. And they are. Mark Karowski, Finley Robbins, Kate Bartolome, Carl Hanks, Ralph Erdman, Gabrielle Armstrong, Tupu Tanvasa, Dorothy Stiller, Ralph Kogler, Mary Williams, Kyle Howard, Adrian Gilbert, Hansa Ang, Terry Lopez, Frederick Gorney, Maria Irene Anglada Badia, Old City Guy, just like me, I love it, Rebecca Diamato, Scott Hannan, Liam Smythe, Carol Popolo, Leonard I. Frenkel, Eric Proctor, Misada Misogensevic, and finally Harvey Hall. Thanks very much guys, I really do appreciate all that you do in supporting the channel. Well, thank you again for watching, please like, share, comment and subscribe by hitting the circle above.
If you do subscribe, activate the bell icon next to the subscribe button on my channel page. And by doing that, you'll be automatically notified every time I upload a new video. And in the meantime, here's a few of my other videos and playlists that you may want to watch. So, until the next time, be safe in your kitchen, and bye for now.